I believe architecture is an art. It changes people's lives. And I think that's what architecture has the potential to do. And I'm, I feel enormously grateful to have had the chance to make a few spaces that I think will change people's lives. I'm sure that the Glasgow School of Art, which we just opened on April 9th, will change lives. You should see the students in there. I mean, they love the spaces. The critics tried to screw me, tried to kill me before the, they tried to stop the building from being built, you know, because they don't understand it and they won't take the time to look inside of it. it this, this building was really, is a building made up of driven voids of light and it's a building that is totally about the experience of going through it and how the structure and the light and the circulation intersect in a really dynamic way to give a fantastic spatial energy that connects all these different art forms, textiles, jewelry making, painting, sculpture. This whole school of art you know, is in now this new dynamic relationship because of the spaces. I'm Stephen Hall here in New York in my office. I have an office in Beijing and, and, and Manhattan, but my origin is really Scandinavian. My grandfather was born in Tonsberg, Norway and uh, immigrated to Seattle where my dad was born in Mukilteo, Washington. And uh, he's full-blooded Norwegian, 93 and a half years old. And uh, his first trip to Europe was when I opened the Kiasma Museum in May of 1998, which was a seminal project for me. And uh, I was very happy that it was in Scandinavia. It was an international competition for the Museum of Contemporary Art, which we renamed Chiasma Intersection, the Chiasmatic Intersection, from the philosopher Merleau Ponty. It came from a book that I was reading when we were doing the competition. And uh, I had an office since 1974, 75, but I was always sleeping on a plywood shelf above the entranceway and nobody knew it. So the Chiasma, the, the Kelsinki, was a kind of threshold building for us because when we won it in 1993, we went from almost nobody to six people and it opened in 98 and uh, put us, I mean, it totally changed my office because it was a competition, international competition uh, and anonymously judged and we won first place in 516 entries. And there were, you know, people like Alvaro Siza. There were very important people in it. So that was a begin my beginning life as an architect in a way in, in terms of that kind of work of culture where you're making space for art. It really bec became the Kiasma Museum. So I was very excited about that. But my... My position, which I drew up in a manifesto in 1988, is a book called Anchoring. And I, I, I said that architecture really begins with a site and a circumstance, a situation and a program, and should be, re, you know, in a way, reinvented for every situation. And I'm not interested in making a signature style that you move from one city or one culture or one uh, kind of climate to another trying to establish yourself in this, whatever style, you know how this goes, it goes very easily in the 21st century because the internet doesn't give you any context. So the people are making architecture like, in a way like uh, Louis Vuitton bags, like kind of branding, uh, kind of operation, which uh, when you actually visit the buildings in their, in their context, they have meaning only based on the, the reputation of the star architect making this kind of implantation in a, and curiously enough, there's a big desire for it because each city wants one Jeff Koons, right? Each city wants one, we won't mention any names. So I'm kind of the opposite of that. My, my position is that architecture should be really about the place and its meaning, the idea that drives the design should be also related to the way that the structure and the light and the space and the material are in some kind of organic relation, something that's tying all these things together. So each project has a kind of idea that drives the design. Um, 
in the case of, of chiasma, it's this intertwining, this notion of the intertwining, the intertwining of Tolo Lonte Bay, the intertwining of culture and art, the intertwining of this low angle of sun that only reaches, I think, 51 degrees, even in the summer. So that building is like a catcher's mitt to bring that light in. And that, that concept sketch was actually made in Helsinki the night I visited the site. So, so, so the, 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 the development of each project then begins with some impulse and a concept that's driving the design. And, and, and I, I once had an exhibition called Idea and Phenomena. So I believe in the a priori idea driving the design, but I don't think you need to know that to get the meaning of the building. So f the phenomena, the experience, you know, a five-year-old child walking into a space that I made can understand it, just like you can understand a piece of music. You don't need to know that Bela Bartok's percussion celeste is divided into four movements, and they're made out of woodwind, uh, lightweight instruments, and heavy you know, drum uh, percussion instruments, and even divided on the stage. You don't need to know all those conceptual strategies that Bartok had to, under, to, to appreciate the music, to experience the music. And I would say also I believe that light is a material. I mean, to me, space, architecture is about shaping space. I'm, I'm, you know, we turn down projects where we're just asked to do an object building, you know, especially if it's monofunctional. Turned down a lot of those in, in Abu Dhabi and in China. We've made like space with buildings, like from linked hybrid in Beijing, where there's eight uh, 22 story towers that form public space, to the horizontal skyscraper in Vanki, which is really about turning the entire ground plane into a tropical garden open to the public, elevating the building at kind of 30 meters above the ground so you can see the sea. So, it's the shaping of space, I think, on the urban scale, but when you come down to the interiors and the building scale, it's how also how that space works with light. In the Nelson Atkins Museum of Kansas City, which was a building that we won in another international competition, in 1999 against Tato Ando, a lot of people, we broke the rules. There's a neoclassical building, uh, 1937, 250,000, very large building, and uh, you were supposed to add on to the north. And so Ando added on a glass box, Potsdam Park added on some pieces. Each architect followed the rules, and I said, this, this is not the right thing to do because you should keep that original building intact and make a new building that would integrate into the landscape. And I remember that the jury was a very key jury because J. Carter Brown, the head of the National Gallery, was on the jury. Ada Louise Huxtable, the greatest architecture writer from the New York Times, was on the jury. So it was a very, you know, it was a large jury, including the director. And I said, I apologize. I, I really feel that I had to break the rules. And I really think now we have an exceptional scheme, an exceptional way to add 140,000 square feet onto your neoclassical uh, stone building. And it was the idea of the stone and the feather. But I said, the way I got the nerve to do this, I, I read in your facade, in the limestone facade, you know how they have these sayings all around the building. And one of them was, the soul has more need for the ideal than of the real. And I said, so this is an ideal scheme. And you know, maybe we're gonna be eliminated because I know we're outside the boundary of the site. Actually, one of them said, but it's so long. And I said, have you ever been to the Louisiana Museum? That's the, one of the greatest museums of art because of the experience, because of the variety of the experience coming in and coming out and the landscape coming into the sequence. You never get museum fatigue at the Louisiana Museum. And if you look at what we're doing here, it's shorter than the Louisiana Museum. And actually all the head people on the jury had been to the Louisiana, so I actually used that building to win this competition in Kansas City. Time Magazine named it the best museum of, of the year and all that kind of things. And it still stands, anybody who goes and sees it, 
realizes it's, it's all about the interior spaces and the light and the sequence of movement because there's nothing on the outside and it's buried in the ground. It comes up in five lenses in the landscape. So, but it works as a public space too. At night it's open, it's a sculpture garden. People you know, walk their dogs, they jog through. It's a very porous and open kind of place. All of my architecture from the very beginning has a golden section ratio. You know, it's something I really believe that's perfect. You know, what's wrong with it's in nature, you know, it's in the Nautilus shell, it's in the solar wind, it's everywhere. So, like, I, I worked with that since my father's house. That's probably the only thing that connects every single building we've ever done. So, but what happens is you, you have a concept, but then you go inside of it, you try to understand what the proportions are, how do you make these great proportions. You start using the relationship of the golden section and you start thinking about sequence of movement through. So there's no plans and that's just, that's the way I work. I'm working from the inside and then come to the outside afterwards. And that's the same thing we did in Helsinki. The interior perspectives of the competition were done before the outside form was settled. And Tula Archeo, the director in Helsinki, she said, well, as soon as I saw those watercolors of the, those interior spaces, I knew that was, that's what we needed for our museum. <laughs> <laughs>